This video, I'll show you how to do a nasal endoscopy in a patient suspected for CSF leak from nose. Now, uh, this is a female patient, and I'm actually trying to show you the uh, zero degree endoscope, trying to go along the nasal floor. That's the coena. Now, I'm examining this area for the reason to detect any fluid leak collecting in the nasal pharynx. Then I'll slightly turn upwards from the coena directly upwards and examine the area between the nasal septum and the turbinate. That's the nasal middle turbinate, as you can see, along with the axilla. But I'm not able to go and negotiate my endoscope further inside that area. So you can see it's kind of coming in between. And to prevent any nasal mucosal damage, I will decongest that particular area. Now, this is a very important step. Now, this is a nasal patty soaked in a solution of 4% LOX. That is the numbing anesthetic solution along with two ampules of adrenaline. Now, this solution will help in numbing this patient's uh, sensation in that particular area and also help us uh, achieve decongestion. So, I'm very really gently going to put that with the help of a freeze elevator as you can see right now. Uh, I'm trying to negotiate this nasal patty between the turbinate and the septum very gently. Now, note this, the patient is there, is not under any kind of sedation or general anesthesia. The patient is conscious, awake, oriented, pretty much awake. The patient can feel whatever steps I'm doing right now perfectly fine. Hence, I'm trying to use this nasal patty for decongestion and the anesthesia. So you can see it's well settled between the nasal turbinate, middle turbinate and the septum. Putting pressure on the cribriform plate. I'm going to keep that inside for 5 minutes. 5 minutes is more than enough for the decongestion and the numbing to take place. So I'm going to remove that nasal patty now. And once I remove, you'll be able to see that there's enough space for my endoscope to go inside and the patient will have no pain as such. Now you can see there's immense space and you can see a small smooth surface, shiny glistening surface, polyp-like structure up there. That's the cribriform plate actually and that is nothing but a pseudo meningocele. That is the dura along with the arachnoid popping out the patient's cribriform plate defect. So I'm going to use now a 70 degree endoscope. Now this is a 70 degree endoscope and you can see as we go behind the cribriform plate, you can see the yellowish white mucosa. That's the olfactory mucosa. You can see that pseudo meningocele right there. If we are close enough to that pseudo meningocele, you can actually see the pulsations happening. And if the patient is asked to bend forward or has a sudden rise, uh, in pressure, the pseudo meningocele will start oozing out clear fluid, that is CSF, which you can send for uh, beta 2 transferrin and uh, glucose concentration studies. So, this is how you basically do the nasal endoscopy in a patient with suspected uh, CSF leak from the cribriform plate, which is the most common area for a CSF leak. Now, we'll be doing this patient's uh, MRI. Uh, the most common uh, investigation is the MR cisternography. Now, if you compare between the MR and the CT cisternography, I would always prefer the patient undergoing a MR cisternography and a CT scan study for the bony anatomy. Uh, MR cisternography, if at all the patient presents the first time for a uh, CSF leak study and the patient does not show any active leak, Neither the MRI shows any active leak. The patient can be called again, given a position, a uh, dependent position to cause the active leak, and the MR cisternography can be done again. Whereas the CT cisternography cannot be undertaken for a longer periods because of repeated uh, exposure to radiations where the MRI does not have any radiations. So CT scan and MR cisternography will be required, and accordingly, the patient will be taken for surgery.